For around 100 years, scientists have known that this one nutrient is more important for your testosterone than any other. When they finally studied it in humans, they showed a 415 point increase in testosterone just by supplementing with this nutrient. And in the control group of this experiment, their testosterone dropped by over 200 points. And subsequent research would go on to show that those findings were not a fluke. In fact, if you don't have enough of this nutrient, not only does your testosterone tank, but your free testosterone tanks, your DHT tanks, your sperm count tanks, and you essentially will become infertile as a man. But when you take infertile men and you supplement them with this nutrient, they actually become fertile again. And that's shown in a two month trial where these men, they couldn't get their wives pregnant for five years of trying, yet within two months of supplementing this nutrient, they saw a testosterone increase by 50%. They saw their sperm counts double, and nine out of the 22 men were finally able to get their wives pregnant. And the nutrient that I'm talking about is zinc. And zinc is one of the most common nutrient deficiencies. And that's mainly because the best sources of zinc are all animal-based. So things like red meat, dairy, and especially oysters. Oysters are a crazy good source of zinc. And then on top of that, factors in grains like phytates can bind up zinc and prevent your body from being able to absorb and utilize it properly. Another big factor is that you'll lose zinc if you're under lots of stress and if you are ejaculating very frequently because there's a lot of zinc in the seminal fluid. But that should tell you just how important it is for male reproductive health. And there's a few key reasons for that. The first being that it serves vital roles in our antioxidant system. And this is so important because low testosterone and male infertility are really conditions of oxidative stress in the testes. Down there is where you make your semen and your sperm, obviously, but it's also where you make your testosterone. And if the cells down there, mainly the Sertoli cells, which produce sperm, and the Leydig cells, which produce testosterone, if they are damaged by oxidative stress, then you are obviously going to have a difficult time producing enough testosterone and becoming fertile. But what zinc does is it plugs into two very important enzymes that help protect these cells against this type of damage and inflammation. The first one is called superoxide dismutase and superoxide dismutase is possibly our most important antioxidant enzyme because the mitochondria spits out a lot of this superoxide and it's extremely reactive and can tear apart your cells within seconds. However, zinc as well as copper plug into this enzyme. They're necessary cofactors for this enzyme to work properly. And with enough zinc, this enzyme will work properly and it's able to detoxify this superoxide, thereby preventing these cells from being damaged and dying and not performing their functions, which is to produce testosterone and sperm. Oxidative stress will also directly kill your sperm cells. Oxidative stress also works on the genetic level in the sense that excess oxidative stress can suppress the genetic expression of certain genes that are involved in producing steroids like testosterone. So when zinc plugs into superoxide dismutase, that's a big deal because it can prevent this entire cascade. Another enzyme that zinc plugs into is called metallothionine. And metallothionine basically acts as a chelator of reactive metals so this can be heavy metals, it could be excess copper, and these metals are a huge driver behind oxidative stress. And this enzyme needs zinc in order to work properly, in order to chelate or keep away these heavy metals from causing oxidative stress. Zinc is also a direct inhibitor of inflammation. The master regulator of inflammation in your cells is called NF-kappa-B. And this turns on just about every inflammatory gene in the book. But zinc inhibits that, and that's very important because inflammation also drives oxidative stress, and inflammation will independently lower your testosterone. This is probably one of the main reasons why people who are overweight or obese, they have higher levels of inflammation, and then they also have lower levels of testosterone. And then if you actually look at the entire process of synthesizing testosterone from scratch, Zinc supports nearly every single step of the way. Basically, the process starts in your brain in the hypothalamus, releasing a compound called gonadotropin releasing hormone. Zinc promotes the release of that. Then when gonadotropin releasing hormone is released, it goes to the pituitary to stimulate two other hormones called LH and FSH. And zinc once again promotes the secretion of those. Then those hormones travel to the testes, to the Leydig cells in order to produce testosterone. This is known as the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. And zinc helps sensitize these cells to these other signals. Basically, zinc will help the Leydig cells respond 
to LH and FSH. And then when you look at the cellular level inside of the Leydig cells, zinc also helps to boost the expression of genes that are involved in the steroid producing process. There's also some evidence that zinc can act as an aromatase inhibitor. In other words, it prevents the excessive conversion of testosterone into estrogen. And even the androgen receptor itself is a zinc dependent receptor. So basically, in other words, zinc helps every step along the way in the production of testosterone and of healthy semen and sperm. And this is why it can show some amazing results in these studies. And low testosterone and hormonal imbalances are so common nowadays, but that's exactly why we have PRISM in order to help people navigate these types of issues. So definitely book a free call here if you want any personalized help from us. We help people with hormonal abnormalities, weight loss, fatigue, mood issues, sleep, anything you can think of that you want help with, personalized, tailored to you, book a free call here and we'll get you right. So that first study we talked about, it was in people with kidney disease. Basically, they build up a lot of toxins and this causes a lot of oxidative stress and this can lead to infertility because of what we talked about before. But giving these men 100 milligrams of zinc a day, which is a lot, was able to boost their testosterone from 400 all the way up to 815. That's a massive, massive bump. Meanwhile, in the control group, like I said before, theirs dropped by over 200. You can also see that it lowered the gonadotropins, so LH and FSH. And this is actually a good thing because the higher levels of those are in the blood, the less sensitive the Leydig cells are. A low amount of these hormones is indicative of sensitive Leydig cells, or in other words, you have good testosterone production in those cells, so you don't need a ton of these hormones in order to stimulate them. But in this study, they showed that those actually got lower, so you're looking at an increase in the sensitivity of those cells to produce testosterone. The second study we have, I mentioned before, was in infertile men, and this one used a more modest dose, 44 milligrams of zinc a day, and like I said before, their testosterone increased they started becoming fertile once again. Have another study here. This one is in dialysis patients. So again, they're dealing with a lot of toxic buildup that's causing their low testosterone. And here they use 50 milligrams of zinc. Once again, you see not only is there a substantial increase in testosterone, but the increase in testosterone is directly correlated to the rise in the levels of zinc. The amount of zinc in the diet also corresponds to the seminal fluid. And then in terms of other metrics of male fertility, Later studies showed that a high zinc diet could increase the total volume of semen. And it was also shown that men with higher levels of zinc had better sperm motility. Now, like I said before, the best sources of zinc are animal food. So you have oysters, you have steak, beef, uh, lamb, uh, other types of steak. You have pork, chicken, uh, liver, mussels, cheese, and shrimp. Uh, I guess cashews are in there as well. It's a random one. But as you can see, it's going to be tough to get enough zinc if you aren't consuming animal foods. Of course, there's a couple different supplemental forms. So you have zinc gluconate, you have zinc acetate, you have zinc sulfate, and you have zinc carnosine. Zinc carnosine is really more of a gut targeted therapy, but it can increase your zinc levels. Gluconate, acetate, sulfate, and citrate, those are all very good forms, very well absorbed. And what the RDA is, is around 10 milligrams a day, which is pretty reasonable as a baseline. However, if you're dealing with infertility or low testosterone, you could bump that up to about 30 or even up to 50 a day. Now, if that is the case, you might want to think about balancing it with copper because copper and zinc are a bit antagonistic. But at these doses, it's not something you have to worry about a ton because we already get tons and tons of copper in the diet. But I think if you're crossing that 30 to 50 threshold, it's something that you want to think about more. Best source of copper by far is beef liver. The other thing about zinc is that it's not like taking steroids and it's not like taking a tea booster. This is not something that indiscriminately boosts your testosterone. It supports your body's production of it. So if that's a limiting factor for you and you are under lots of oxidative stress and you're low on zinc, which if you have relatively low testosterone, you more than likely are, then zinc is gonna help a lot. But if you're already very healthy and you're lean and you're pretty high testosterone already, Zinc is not going to be the thing that takes you from an 800 to a 1200, at least not in most cases. But the thing is, the vast majority of men, that is not a problem that you need to worry about because you more than likely are not already at 800. In fact, the low T epidemic is pretty well known at this point. Testosterone levels have been dropping over the last 100 years or so. Another study here, looking at the 50th percentile of testosterone, you're around 450 to 500 nanograms per deciliter. So basically half of men are already under 500. Finally, 
finally, if you want to get your inflammatory markers measured or your testosterone or your zinc or anything else without a doctor at a discount, you can do so through Revelation Diagnostics. Use code ANALYZE at checkout for 10% off. All you got to do is go to the website, put the labs in your car, and go find a lab near you, and you can get them done as soon as possible. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.